There we go. All right, making the pieces fit. Um, my name is Paul Derwald. I'm, I live in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada, and I'm here in the UK for the next couple months. Uh, my wife is on a fellowship at Oxford, so that's what brings me here. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm happy to be here. I'm excited to meet all of you. So I have been a little bit quiet because I'm a little bit nervous, but after when we're having some beers, I'd love to meet all of you. I have been a web application developer since uh, 1999, working in a really obscure framework called OpenACS, which none of you have ever heard of. And if you have, I'm sorry. Uh, in about 2006, I switched to Ruby on Rails and life got a lot better. Um, and I've been an Ember developments developer since right about now. Uh, I, I just started, I've been meaning to get into it for a few years, as I understand many of you have. It's one of those things that I want to do this, but it's hard to get into it because I've got the, the, my day job or my client work that's keeping me back in whatever I used to do. Anyway, I decided a few months ago that I'm going to do it, and I got into it at least a little bit until my client started ringing at my door again and needing more. So uh, this is sort of my first foray into Ember development and sort of getting my head around how Ember hangs together. I find that the guides are a little bit hard to get into because of how they're written. They're written from a very, they're written from a perspective that says this is what a controller is, but it doesn't really tell me why I would use a controller. And I've sort of had to tease a lot of those things out as I've used the framework. If any of you have written a non-trivial Ember app, you already know the, everything that I'm going to say today. And if you are also that experienced, you're probably going to find all sorts of mistakes in what I'm going to say. So please be gracious, those of you who have the experience. Those of you who don't, think of this as a journey with me in my understanding of how Ember works. And hopefully there are some grains, little things that you can latch onto that will help solidify your understanding if you think at all the way I do. And as far as that goes, I'm. The way I learn, my bias in when I pick up a new framework is that I'm, I really care about the architecture and more specifically understanding the architecture. I need to see the structure and how the pieces fit together and only then can I work with it. I'll stare at a bunch of code, uh, even a few lines, and I'll be Googling all over the place to figure out how the code is supposed to run rather than simply running it to find out because I just want to know how it all fits. I'm a little ambivalent about magic in, in a development environment, and this is because I've been burned by all the magic in Ruby on Rails. Uh, things just happen, and you're not really sure why. So a fair bit of this talk kind of digs into what I think and what I've been able to test is actually happening in the background. I haven't gone into the Ember source. I'm not, I'm not that dedicated, or not that um, courageous is a better word. So I haven't gone that far in yet, but Anyway, these things have helped me figure that out. Um, all right. So what I'm going to do is we're going to start by looking at a very simple Ember application. Um, for those of you who are further back, this might be hard to see because I'm trying to cram a lot of code onto the screens. And it might be hard to see from the back. I looked. I was able to see it. Certainly, some of the examples code goes right to the bottom of the screen. So you will struggle with that. So if you stand up, I wouldn't blame you. So here's a really, really simple application that you've probably seen, probably written yourself, ember.application.create. Here's some content. For me, what blows my mind is that this actually works. I don't know why it works at a glance, because there's nothing here that connects app to what's in here. So something magical is happening. And that is what I'm sort of going to talk about first. What I've learned. When you type this, it automatically, the Ember application automatically sets up a router, router, the UK expression, the Canadian, I, I'm going to say router and router, and it's just kind of interchangeable, so bear with me. It automatically sets up a route for the slash path. In fact, to be more specific, it sets up a slash index, and I'm even munging details a little bit, which I'll get into later. And then Ember will also set up a, a route for you. So the router points to the route, and then it will set up a controller for you, and it'll send up, set up a view with a template that finally refers to the index. 
So now it makes sense to me why I can see the content uh, on the screen. So all of this stuff just happened magically. And in fact, there's one more subtlety, which is Ember also created an ap application layout, which has simply an outlet. So that's where the data goes, the content that you are rendering goes into. So after much puzzling and much searching, I came up with sort of a bit of an architectural diagram, very loose, of how Ember works, or how Ember is organized. There's the router, which has the maps to all of the different routes. The route sets up a controller and loads a model and sticks it in the controller, or any number of models, and it can set up any number of controllers. The controllers instantiate views, and the views render templates. Um, you've probably pieced all that together, but I didn't in my travels find a picture that showed it to me in that way. So this for me has been kind of helpful to, to organize mentally where all the pieces come to. So I'm going to show some, uh, an example of how some of this hangs together in, a, in, a, in an app. Here I have uh, much of what we had before. In this case, I've created a route called Hi. And I have two templates, one that links uh, a link and a link to the template. And it works as you would expect. You click on Say Hi, and Hello World pops up. What's happened in the background is that a high route was created, as was a high controller and a high view. And so, and here I'll change, I've changed the word route to resource. This in and of itself, just changing that word route to resource doesn't do anything. But as soon as I add an empty function to it, magically I get a high route and I get a new high index route. So note I've still got this content here. Everything still works as it did, uh, but there's a little bit of a subtlety. So here, I've now changed the template a little bit so I've got high index, which refers to, uh, says hello Ember London. When I run this code and I click the link, I would kind of expect high index to, to appear because the flow, all right, backing up a little bit. When you set this up, when you, back here. When I ran this, I had in my own development uh, at home, I set up some logging when each of these routes was activated. And the flow works, the flow runs when I view this. First, the high route is activated, and then the high index route is activated. So the flow works through each of these. So my thought was that when I added hello Ember London, that I would see high index rather than high. That's not actually what happens. I get hello world. The reason why is because when I use the word resource, Ember gave me an outlet, and I did not expect that. So once I s uh, created an outlet, or I, I added the outlet to a layout, the content appeared, as it happens here. Is everybody following this at all? <laughs> OK. I don't know if it's advanced or not, or whatever. Everybody's <laughs> learning at a different level. So I have another example here. I've added one more route, hey, so hi and hey, because that's what you do when you're writing demo code. And <laughs> uh, I've kept this, and I've got hello Ember London. I have a link from the hello world to this. And what you'll be able to see is that the outlet, or the layout for the hi route is maintained for both of the for both the high index and the high hay routes. So let's return to the Ember architectural diagram. This is one of the other things that I've sort of, as I was working with Ember, I was trying to figure out, well, how do I make these pieces come together? How do I write a non-trivial app? The examples you typically find on the net 
uh, are the to-do app because there are countless to-do apps. That's what you write these days. Seven years ago, it was blog applications that you wrote. So now with the to-do apps, they work with a single model and it, it just all flows really naturally. You have a router and to it you attach a route and a controller and the controller is created. There's a view that's instantiated, a, a single model is used and a single template and that's the relationship. It's a one to one to one to one to one to one ratio or relationship. At least that's what is implied in how everything is set up. And I think part of that implication is because of the word resource. Coming out of the Rails world, uh, resource means that there is a single model and that you, you are interacting with a single model and you're creating a CRUD framework around it. So CRUD, create, retrieve, update, and delete. When you set up a resource, you're saying, here is a post. I'm going to be able to view it. I'll be able to edit it. I'll be able to create new ones. But it's this sort of vertical column of functionality based around a model. And that's what everything leads to. Now, I can see this. It makes sense because it's really, it makes great demo because, well, you get all this code for free because of all the magic that you get. And it's kind of fun to explain and it's just easy to work with because it's simple. But I don't think it's quite real. I think real applications have you with a single, you might have, go to a single URL, but on that page, you'll, ha you'll be looking at half a dozen or a dozen different models and will be presented in different ways. And so for me, I've started to view Ember as having sort of these two sections of functionality. Over here where the router and the route is, that is, that's the way, that's what the URL is. So that's what appears in my address bar and with a resource route, that's what I see, that's the layout that I would pr be provided. On the other hand, the controller and view and template this is the content that gets put into the various outlets that are provided by the route. So this is about the content. This is about the flow to get to that page. In the middle is sort of this glue. And I didn't give it a circle because it's nothing that I would actually circle. But it's the route that is, I picture the route like an army general. So the, the army general has a whole lot of controllers, the troops at its disposal, and it has a whole lot of arms, the models, and it equips each of the troops with some amount of models, and it sends them out into the web page battlefield to display themselves. Uh, so this, this is how I've sort of <coughs> come to think about it. So, yeah. So I'd like to show an example of how I broke away from CRUD, broke away from thinking of a single vertical column of functionality based around a model. And it's, I'm going to just talk about one route and show multiple outlets coming out of that route. So this is what's going to be a little bit hard to see. The, the example will go all the way down. So if you can't see at the back, uh, now's a good time to move forward. But anyway. So I'm creating an Ember application. I have two outlets that I've named outlet one and outlet two. And I have some, I have a template for uh, the main index content, the content for outlet one and the content for outlet two. And what happens when I run it? As expected, there is no content for outlet one or outlet two. It hasn't been wired in yet. However, the content for the main outlet does appear the way I want it to. So, in order to, to get this to work, and again, thinking about it like the route as an army general, it's saying, I have a bunch of controllers, I have a bunch of models, well, in this case, I'm not using any models, but I have a bunch of controllers, and I'm going to say, here, controller one, go over there to outlet one. Controller two, go to outlet two. And I want you to take care of things. I'll get there a little bit slowly. Here I'm saying, uh, I would like the index route to render the contents of template one using the current controller and into outlet number one. And the same thing with outlet two, and then render itself. And lo and behold, it renders the way I want.
what did I do here? Oh, yes. So in this code, I've just added a little bit of content uh, and a, a handlebars expression to include some extra content. And how do I get it to appear? Well, I created an index controller which provides some content. And the content appears all the way through. But I can provide different controllers and, send th and apply them to different outlets and give them each their own content. So now I've created, I ha still have the index controller as before. I've added a one controller and a two controller. So they say foo, bar, and baz. In the render template, I find the controller, which is here of the controller for one, and it's nomenclature that connects them. Controller for two, it connects it, and then I render, I, I send, I tell the route to render with, into the outlet one with the one controller, and into the outlet two with the two controller, and the different values appear. There we go. So that was sort of a whirlwind quick tour. In summary, what I've tried to do here is talk a little bit about the magic of, of Ember and try to demystify, because for me, I really got stuck on what the magic was. I couldn't see how I got from A to Z. It, it just didn't make sense until I broke it down and traced how the code execution worked all the way through from front to back. I showed a picture of the architecture of how I think Ember is all kind of assembled, more or less, and I hope I've shown how to kind of break free of implicit constraints. This has been useful for me to start to break beyond just a to-do app into something somewhat more complex. So, thanks very much. Um, are there any questions? Please. Did you come across the render helper, the render handlebars helper at all in your adventures? Render handlebars helper? No. No, I did not. The uh, question is, did I come across the render handlebars helper? And no, I did not. So it's, it's in a similar territory to what you've done there. It will, it will render, say you did render one, Mm -hmm. It will go get the one controller and the one template and render it in that place that you've said. So it's still assuming you're working with that singleton controller. Oh, okay. So you get whatever model is wired into that controller at that point in time, and then you can kind of place it anywhere. And so it saves the, it saves you doing the this dot render in the root if that's the approach you want to take. Right. I guess that would unleash more magic. And at my yeah. level, I, I don't know how to control the magic yet. Yeah, you have to know where it's getting all the stuff. That's right. So knowing that, what I'd probably do is still write it the hard way and then refactor it to do it the easy way because I just I need to understand it at a very basic level in order to, yeah, make all the pieces fit. Anyone else? Yes? Do you think that the magic that's happened for those easy initial steps do I think that the magic that happens for the initial steps makes Ember harder to learn? Yes. Yeah, the magic, it's something that I find the, the demo articles or the, the guide articles, the guides on the website, on the Ember.js website and anything else that I've found, they all love the hand waving of the magic. Look, you can do this. And I, I, but I just don't understand why, I don't understand how. So that has really tripped me up, and it tripped me up a lot in the Rails time as well. Later on, I appreciate the magic, but I wish, I wish that introductory articles would actually be a little bit more tedious in explaining all of the t details. And later on, only when I understand the details, then I'm ready for the shortcut. But when I was in a high school calculus class, the first derivatives I did were all done by hand, and it was painful. And then afterwards, the teacher said, OK, and you can also do it like this, and showed a really quick way. I'm like, oh, OK. But at least I understand how it works from first principles. And the guides with the magic, they just never get into the first principles. Yes? Um, so what's our next step? How to piece together the basics, remember? 
my next step? Yeah, with Ember, like, like Ember, like, would you, oh. you So if I can echo that back to you, now that I've learned what I have, would I continue working with Ember? Yes, and how would you? How would I? Yeah. Well, continue working with Ember, absolutely. I've I've bought into the philosophy of Ember, and I want to know how it works. I want to be a part of the community. I want to, I want to benefit from the good things that are happening in that space. How would I go forward? Well, the nascence of this talk was a couple months ago when I had a bit of free time in my schedule. I started to write a non-trivial application. And part of the way I learn is I jump in head first. I for me, the only interesting application is one where I'm talking to a database, I have many models, I'm showing the stuff, showing all sorts of things on the screen at the same time, because that's what my customers pay me to do. So if I can't do that, I'm actually not interested in solving the problem. I have to, I have to go all that way. So my next step is actually my current step. I've been working on an application for a simple data set for my wife, actually. The reason that we're here in the UK is because she has a fellowship at Oxford. She researches 18th century German opera, and I have a small database of operas, composers, librettists, performances, the different pieces in the opera. There are enough models, but it's a very simple relationship between those models. So my goal has been to write an application where I can just browse the different parts and using Ember data to set up the relationship between the different models and what this actually feels like. And well, it took me weeks of just plodding along and getting the smallest things because I kept getting tripped up by the complexity of the framework at the outset. But I'm starting, I'd say I'm at the point where, where if you ski, you sort of ski to the edge of the, the 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 hill and you're about to go down and I am about to go down. I can feel my, my acceleration picking up because I'm starting to understand these concepts. So this talk is, I've just finally made it far enough so I'm not falling down all the time while I ski and I'm ready to, to go for real. So does that answer the question? Yeah, thanks. Yes. Why would I pick Ember over other frameworks? Uh, this goes back to my days with Ruby on Rails. Around the Rails 2.3 era, if any of you are Rails developers, I once I had a problem with some code that I was working on for a customer, and I had to dig into the Rails internals, and it was a horrifying experience. It was so convoluted and I, I found a bug somewhere or I found a bug in a test because it was actually a tautology and just so many things about Rails were just seemed deeply, deeply broken and I thought, I can't hitch my future to Rails. And then Merb happened and then Merb became Rails 3 and behind Merb and Rails 3 was Yehuda Katz and Yehuda Katz is behind Ember. So fast forward, wherever Yehuda goes, that's kind of where I'll go. Because <laughs> he's really, really bright. He's a lot brighter than I am, and I trust him. I've also heard him speak at a number of conferences, and one of the things that the, the core team of Ember say, one of their goals is that they want to make, that Ember is about writing ambitious applications and they want to solve hard problems and make hard problems easy to deal with for the average developer, uh, for the run-of-the-mill developer, the developer is just trying to get things done. And I appreciate that. The, Yehuda would refer to, referred to the other frameworks at the time, this was a couple of years ago, so things certainly have changed, but he talked about how they're leaving all of the hard problems <coughs> as details for the developer to figure out. Whereas Ember is just sort of like, no, 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 the hard problems, we're going to figure those out. We're going to do that. And, and they've taken their time to do it right and do it the, the solid, well-grounded way. So although I'm having a hard time figuring out how it is that Ember hangs together, I have faith in the people who are developing it that they've done a really good job making it hang together. And I'm going to hitch my wagon to it. Anything else? Thank you. Both. Thank you.
Thank you.